you want to add fields to your device user signup in a Rails application? If so, stick around to find out how. I'm Thomas with Brainchoice Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning about full stack web development, please consider subscribing below. I have a goal of reaching 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I'd really appreciate it if you consider liking, subscribing, or sharing with a friend who you think might be interested in this type of content. In this AWS Rails tutorial, we're going to walk through how to add additional fields to a device user signup in a Rails 6 application, specifically first name and last name. We will also be adding a few validations to ensure some required fields are present. Finally, we're gonna add the confirmable module to ensure that users sign up with a valid and functioning email address. Confirmable is a device module that you can optionally include. And what it does is sends out an email to the email address provided by the user at time of signup. That email contains a link that the user must click to be able to activate their account. So with that being said, let's get into this AWS Rails tutorial where we walk through how to add some additional fields to devise as well as the confirmable module. As you can see, we have our AWS Rails application loaded locally. We'll go ahead and jump into the code and start making some changes. We'll start in app controllers, application controller.rb. As you can see, we already have some code here to overload the device permitted parameters. We completed this step as part of a previous tutorial where we were creating dynamic profiles by logged in user's role. So if you wanna see that video, I'll link that in the card as well as the description below. There's nothing fancy about this code. This is directly from the device gems readme page on GitHub. All we need to actually do here is add a few more keys to the signup array. Here we're adding first name and last name so that we can add those two fields to our signup form to try and expedite the process for our new users. Next, let's open up the form and add those new fields there as well. In app views, device, registrations, new, we're gonna add our new fields. If you don't have a device folder inside of your views, you can just go ahead and run rails g device colon views to generate these in the terminal. Since we already did this as part of a previous project, we're just gonna go ahead and update our view now. Above the email field, we're gonna go ahead and add our first name and last name form fields. As you can see, if we reload the page, that adds the fields to the form. These fields combined with the application controller override that we included in the previous step will allow the new users to sign up and pass along this additional information. As you can see, if we sign up with a new user passing along a first and last name and click sign up, you can note that this new user's first and last name were submitted as part of the signup process. Next, let's go ahead and add a couple of validations to require first and last name as part of the signup process as well. To do so, let's open our user model. Here we're going to validate first name, last name with a presence of true. This will ensure that somebody has to provide at least some value in the first and last name fields. If we go back to our application, sign out of our new user. If we attempt to sign up with a new user but leave these fields blank and click the sign up button, you'll see we get an error. These fields cannot be blank. This will ensure new users must provide this data before moving forward. As you can see, if we provide this information and then click sign up again, we will successfully be able to sign up for the application. As a last step to to improving our sign up process, I thought it might be nice to show how to add a device module after you've already installed device. In this case, we're going to be adding the device confirmable module. If you go to the device gem page on GitHub, you can see all the modules listed below. There's 10 modules. Some of them are enabled by default. Confirmable is not one of those. So we're going to go ahead and enable that after the fact and show you how you would go about doing so. Sometimes you don't always know which modules you'd like to use. Thought it might be beneficial to see how you could do so. In our user model, under the device heading, you can see the module that were enabled by default. Here you can also see the confirmable module as well as a few others that are commented out. Part of this process will be requiring us to pull the confirmable module and move it down to the active modules listed. Some of the device modules require database columns to function properly and confirmable is one of those. So to see how this works, let's just go ahead and check out the database migration for when we originally installed device. Here you can see our device create users migration. 
The default migration is very cleanly broken up by module. You can see there under the confirmable heading, we can see all of the columns required for the confirmable module to function properly. We're just gonna have to create a migration to add these columns. Also note that we're gonna add a database index on the confirmation token as well for fast retrieval. While I'm only demonstrating the confirmable module in this case, a similar process could be used for trackable or lockable or any other module you'd like to add that you did not enable by default when originally creating your device model. One important note, this will be a new migration. We're not just going to uncomment this old migration as the database has already migrated past this migration. This won't run if we just uncommented it. So we'll just create a new migration to account for this limited subset of fields that we need to add. So let's go ahead and do that now. In the console, we'll run Rails G migration. We'll give our migration a name. We're gonna say add confirmation to users. Next, we're just gonna go down the list and add each column name and field combination. So we need confirmation token that has to be a string. Since it's a string, we could just leave that be. Confirmed at, which will be a date time. Confirmation set at, which will also be a date time. Finally, we'll add unconfirmed email. Uh, this is only required if we're using the reconfirmable. I'm not sure that we're gonna use that, but we'll just add that in case. And that is a string, so we could just leave that as a string as the default data type. Okay, so we'll go ahead and generate this migration, but remember, we also need to add in this index here at the bottom. We can actually just copy that as well, and then open up our new migration. Here you can see all of the columns with their data types that we're going to add. We'll drop in our index as well, and go ahead and save. Next, let's run Rails DB migration. As you can see, our columns were migrated to the user's table. It's important to note that the confirmable module sends out an email to ensure a valid email address has been provided. The user signs up, they'll get an email, they must click a link in the email to finish the sign up process, which implies that you have the ability to send email from your Rails application. I've covered this topic previously in the AWS Rails series with a video about how to use AWS to send SES emails from your Rails application. So I'll link that video in the card as well as the description below. We need to confirm that device has a valid email address. In our case, it's going to be the one we hooked up to SES in the previous tutorial. So in config, initializers, device, you know, scroll down and make sure that you have a config mailer sender populated here. In our case, as part of that tutorial, we set up a no-reply email address. So we'll use the same thing here. Now that that's complete, let's go ahead and check out a branch. Get checkout-b, we'll call our branch add fields to sign up. We're gonna go ahead and add all of the changed files. Next, we will get commit with a message. And we can go ahead and push our new branch up to GitHub. As always, if you're working with a team, this would be the point where you would create a pull request and then have your teammate review your code. In our case, since we're just trying to continue moving forward, we're just gonna go ahead and merge this so that we can deploy. Get checkout master, get merge. We'll run get push to push this merge code up to GitHub, our remote repository. Then we can go ahead and deploy with bundle exec cap production deploy. I just wanna interrupt for one second and see if you're finding value. Please subscribe below, hit the like button, turn on the bell notification for, for future notifications of, of content like this. And if you are, we have a limited time offer. Our coworker here, Bear, will perform one trick per subscriber. Yes, down, yes, roll over. Good boy, you're the goodest boy. Good boy, down, down. Oh my gosh, we're going viral, Bear. Now that our application has finished deploying, we can reload our production application in the browser and go ahead and sign up with a new example user. In this test, it's important to use a real email address that I just created off camera. The reason for this is Confirmable is going to send an email to this address with a link in it. The account cannot be accessed until that link is clicked from the email address. So this is a way within Devise to validate and confirm that your users have real email addresses. So let's go ahead and click sign up. You'll notice the flash message here is a little bit different. It says a message with a confirmation link has been sent to our email address. So we're gonna head and open that in Amazon Workmail. 
can see the email we sent ourselves from our application. In that email, we're provided with a link that we can click. Let's go ahead and click that now. As you can see, then we're given the opportunity to log into our new account after we have successfully confirmed. Now we're officially logged in as the example user, and that email has been confirmed. I hope this video helps. If you enjoyed the video and learned something, please consider liking and subscribing. That really helps out the channel. Let me know if you have any more questions or requests in the comment section below, and I'll catch you in the next AWS Rails tutorial.